Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number nine from the February, March 2022, paper four, variant two, Cambridge IGCSE um, <coughs> examination. And this question nine, part A, is about this cone, which has been opened up to make the net of its solid. So this volume, the paper cone was slit along this line, O to AB, and it was opened up and flatten out to form this sector okay and we know that the we have to find the sector angle x we know the volume of the cone is given as 95.4 centimeters cubed and we also know the radius of the cone the cone itself the base of the cone is 2.4 centimeters and with that information we need to find the angle x now the angle x is an angle in the sector. Now there are two uh, formulae that we know for sector. One of them is to do with the, the area of a sector, which is x over 360, the angle over 360, times pi times, um, let's call this big R squared, the radius of the sector squared. All right, that's one formula. And the other formula we can use to find the, or, or to, to incorporate the x, another formula that we know for x is Let's just write that neatly, is the length of the arc, the length of this arc here, I'll call it, this is L, the length of the arc from there to there, is equal to, again, the angle over 360 times the circumference of this whole circle, which would be 2 pi r. So we only want that fraction of the, of the circumference. Now, these are two formulas in which, or formula we can use to try to find what x is. Now, I can find quite easily the length of the arc of this sector because it's the same as the circumference of the base of the cone because that's A and B joined together there so it's like when you open this up and flatten it out that's A that's B so the length of the arc of this cone is going to be equal to 2 times pi times the radius of the cone here which is 2.4 so that's 2 times pi times 2.4 so the length of the arc of this cone is 4.8 pi. So this is 4.8 pi. Okay, I'll just put equal. This is equal to 4.8 pi. That's the length of this arc of this cone. So therefore, this is a formula I think will be easy for, you, for us to use because we know the value of L. And what's left for us to find now is the value of this R, the radius of this sector. If I know the radius of the sector, I know if I know this and I know this, I can find that x. So I need to find what the radius of this sector is. Now the radius of the sector is the same as the slant height of this cone because you're opening it up. That's going to be the radius of the sector. Okay. So the slant height of this cone, I'm going to give it. Um, I'm going to call it y. But I won't call it l because that might get confusing. Okay. I'll call it y. This is this length here. I can find that length by using Pythagoras' theorem. Because what I have here is a right angle. Um, this is uh, the vertical height, and this is the radius, which is 2.4 centimeters. Now, I don't know. I don't know what the vertical is, how the vertical height of this is, but I can find it because they gave us some information that is also important about the volume, and they told us this formula, which we should really know anyway. But they give it to us for these for these pyramid type shapes so we know that the volume is equal to 95.4 centimeters cubed and we know what r is the only thing unknown is h so we can find what h is using this formula so let's use this formula here we can say that um, one third times pi times r squared which is 2.4 squared times the height which we're trying to find is equal to 95.4 so if i rearrange this i have 95.4 multiplied by 3 and divided by 2.4 squared times pi. So let me work out what this is in terms of pi first. So I have 95.4 multiplied by 3 divided by 2.4 squared. I'll leave it in terms of pi. So it's 795 over 16. 795 over 16 and the pi is in the denominator that is the the vertical height of this okay so that's 790 
5 over 16 pi. So with these two lengths, I can use Pythagoras' theorem to find what y is. Okay, so that you can say that y is going to be the square root of this 795 over 6. Look at that, I wrote down the other way around. Be very careful about making silly mistakes like that. 795 over 16 pi, which is underneath, be careful of that, squared, plus, because we're finding y, which is the hypotenuse, so it's the sum of the square of the two shorter sides, plus 2.4 squared. Okay, that's going to give you the value of y, and, and that y is the same as this r, okay, is the, is the same as the radius of the sector. Okay, so let's um, continue with that. So we're going to have this. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll put divided by pi. Okay, it's going to give me now um, something which is uh, not exact, but no problem. I'm going, to, I'm going to take the square root of my last answer squared plus 2.4 squared. So I'm trying to keep things as accurate as possible. Okay, that's going to give me 15.997. So 15.997. I'm not rounding th things to uh, 3SF. I'm leaving them to more than 3SF to keep accuracy in our answers. It's very important for you to do that. And now once I've done that, I can now use the... F I can say that, therefore, the radius of the sector is equal to 15.997 centimeters. So we can say the length of the arc is x degrees over 360 degrees times 2 times pi times the big R. So we know the length of the arc now from this is 4.8 pi. We have to find x. We've got 2 times pi times the radius, uh, which is 15.997. So if I want to find x, I can rearrange this. I have 360 times 4.8 pi divided by all of this, which is 2 times pi times 15.997. The pi's will cancel. Okay, I can just put this in my calculator now. 360 times 4.8. So I'll keep this answer and write that at the end. As. So I've got um, 360 times 4.8 divided by 2 times the last answer, which was 15.997. And that gives me 54.098, 54 54.0098, 54 so that rounds to 3SF as 54.0 degrees. In fact, we should do one decimal place, which works out the same anyway. We should always round angles to one decimal place. Okay, so there's the answer to question number nine, part A. Okay, it's a bit of an involved one, but um, you have to just keep your head straight, think about how to find... Um, you know, these basically, how do you involve this with these two formulae? Okay, one to do with the length of this arc, one to do with the area. We can't really find the area of this. We would need pi times r times l. Um, and to find l, we need to have, um, you know, the height. And we can't find the height except by using the volume. So really, uh, it's easier for us to find what r, what this is, and use the length of the arc. That's easier. So that's the answer to question 9a. Okay, so that's to do with uh, volumes and areas, I guess, as well. Not areas, and, um, and sectors. Okay, now, for part B, it says an empty fuel tank is filled using a cylindrical pipe with a diameter of 8 centimeters. Fuel flows along this pipe at a rate of 2 meters per second. It takes 24 minutes to fill the tank. Calculate the capacity of the tank, giving your answer in liters. All right, so you have a tank, all right? We don't know what shape it is. It doesn't really matter, okay? So let's just draw just the shape. It doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter what the shape is of the tank. So this tank is being filled by a cylindrical pipe, okay? And the diameter of the pipe is 8 centimeters. Okay, there's a... Every second, two meters of water is flowing through the pipe. Every second. Okay. And it takes 24 minutes for this tank to fill. Okay. 
So what we can do is we can work out what is the volume of water flowing per second. So the volume, okay, per second flowing through the pipe. And we can uh, work out, therefore, um, the volume, the, the amount of time, we can work out the capacity of time by multiplying that by 24 minutes because it's going to take 24 minutes. We'll find out the volume that's going through into it every second and multiply that by 24 minutes. We can then work out the time it takes to fill the tank by the proportion. So the volume of water flowing per second. Now, this what they gave us is not the volume of water, it's the length of water. So if you think about it, just take one snapshot of one second of this pipe. We want to find the volume of water in this pipe. So that's two meters per second. Okay, and that's the, the, the diameter is eight centimeters. Okay, so we know that the volume of this cylinder, this is like a cylinder, cylindrical pipe, the volume of a cylinder is pi r h. Okay, now um, because we want to give the answer in liters, I'm going to consider this in terms of centimeters. Um, cubed. I'll work the answer in centimeters cubed because I know that one liter is 1,000 centimeters cubed. So it'll be easy if I if I work in centimeter cubed. So this two meters per second is 200 centimeters per second. So the volume is going to be pi times the radius. The radius is going to be 4. The diameter is, is equal to 8. Therefore, the radius is equal to 4 centimeters. So pi times 4 squared times the height. The height is how long the pipe is basically that's going to be times 200 in centimeters so this is going to give me 16 times 200 that's going to be 3200 3200 pi centimeters cubed let's just make sure that's correct we've got pi times 4 squared times 200 that gives us 3,200 3, pi, 3, pi centimeters cubed. That's the volume going every second. So what we can do is we can say this. We say, okay, we know that in one second, there's 32,000 pi centimeters cubed flowing. And we know that it takes 24 minutes to fill the pipe. And we want to find how many centimeters cubed it's flowing. And then we'll change that to liters in the end. Now, 24 minutes, if we multiply it by... 60 it now becomes in seconds because they have to be the same so what we can say is we can say that 32,000 pi times 24 times 60 centimeters cubed will be how much is going to be in this tank so we, we take this 3200 pi multiply by 24 and by 60 that will give you the amount, number of centimeters cubed flowing in this tank okay which is going to be uh, let's get rid of the pi from this 32,000 times 24 times 60 gives you um, 460 uh, 4,608,000 pi okay I'm keeping pi there until the end okay that's in centimeters cubed therefore if you want to find in liters you have x equals this 4608 divided by a thousand okay that's now in liters if you we know one liter is a thousand centimeters cubed okay so to change from centimeters cubed to liters you have to divide by a thousand so the answer is going to be this divided by a thousand um 4,600, get rid of the three zeros, but you've got to multiply that by pi. So the answer comes out as uh, 104, sorry, 14,476.45. So that's 14,476.4589, whatever. So we want to round this to 3SF because it's not exact value. So for three to 3SF, three that's going to be 14,500 liters. It doesn't ask us how to round it. So yeah, the answer is 14,500 liters. That's the capacity of the tank in liters. Okay, so there's the answer to this question, part B. So that's A and B done. 
um, um, <coughs> of question number nine, all about mensuration areas, volumes, okay, and applications of that. So um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this region over here. Other questions about uh, IGCSE menstruation questions can be found in this playlist. You can, sub you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.